Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. Ride-hailing service Uber's Sub-Saharan Africa GM, alone lit, sees huge scope for its growth in South Africa. Irma Fender tells us more about the challenges and opportunities facing Uber driver partners in South Africa. Hi Irma. Hi Shana. How successful has Uber been in rolling out its services in South Africa and the rest of Africa? Well, Uber's rolled out in three cities in South Africa when they launched in 2013. That was Johannesburg and, and Cape Town and Durban. It's proved very popular and to a degree you can often see South Africans taking back their cities at night. They venture out now with Uber drivers where previously maybe they were a bit crime shy and they would stay away. You can uh, often see them venturing out more at night. At least that's my uh, anecdotal evidence that I can see around me and that Alon Litz will also tell you. Following South Africa, then of course Uber ventured into um, into Sub-Saharan Africa. Litz is now also where he started off as Johannesburg GM. He's now also the Sub-Saharan GM, so he's made quite a, a name for himself in, in quite a short bit of time. So then they rolled out to a number of, of African cities, and these include Ni um, Nigeria cities like Abuja and Lagos, and they're also in um, a few cities in Kenya like uh, um, Mombasa and Nairobi, and they're also in Accra and also in Dar es Salaam in Tanzania, for example, and Kambala in Uganda as well. They're planning to put a few more cities on the list by the end of the year, but of course the uh, Uber must first consolidate what they have now, and then they'll roll out to two more countries. A big part of the success in these African countries has been the fact that they've allowed cash. If uh, you remember away in the beginning, Uber didn't allow cash, you had to pay with your credit card. But there's a bit of a distrust in Africa for th this electronic payment, and Uber really only see, saw a real growth in their numbers in sub-Saharan Africa when they started to allow cash. And cash is also, of course, allowed now. Um, cash payments is also allowed in South African cities at the moment. The introduction of Uber has led to discontent among existing metered taxi operators. How is Uber dealing with this? The problem partially may be that there's a bit of a cap on the drivers that Uber can actually uh, use. So there's more than 4,000 at the moment. So I, I can venture an opinion to say that I don't think they can accommodate as many metered taxi service uh, operators as they as would like to be part of Uber services at the moment. So there's a bit of a, I think a bit of a problem there that nobody really wants to, to talk about. The other problem is permitting. So you, when you run a meter taxi, you have to have a meter taxi permit. And of course, fairly, the meter taxi operators were very unhappy about Uber coming into the market and the drivers didn't need any of these permits at the beginning. Um, of course, this system is now much more regulated in this country and also abroad, where Uber drivers are also required to have a meter t taxi permit. Um, there's a bit of ambiguity still around the system, though, in South Africa. For example, in Cape Town, there's a subcategory called e-hailing. You apply for your permit there, and you can't operate while waiting for this permit, which apparently t um, can take up to a year, according to LITS. In Johannesburg, though, there's no subcategory for e-hailing and you can operate while you are waiting for your meter taxi permit. So I think there's just a, a bit of uh, ambiguity in how the system operates at the moment. Uh, Litz is very adamant though, that Uber wants to work with the authorities to make sure that they offer a legal service in all the cities in South Africa and in Africa. It is also considering rolling out new services in South Africa. What are these and when can we see those? Well, there are quite a number of exciting services already. I, I don't know if people are aware you get Uber van, for example, if you're a large group of people, you can order a, a, a larger vehicle. There's Uber family with um, seats specially made for kids. So, And there's also Uber black, which is a luxury limousine service almost that um, can, can pick you up and uh, pick you up for a special event, for example, apart from the normal Uber services. Then there are also, of course, now the new service that we're planning, and that's Uber Eats, and that will deliver food. It will mostly be a motorcycle-based service, it seems like, and I think Uber's already recruiting for this service. The one that will probably make, should make, um, legislators very happy is Uber Pool, and that will look at ride sharing. For example, if I stay in Pretoria and I work in Johannesburg, the service will look at other people staying around me, wishing to use the same car, and then we can share that Uber vehicle traveling to Pretoria and Johannesburg for work, for example, and share the fee for that vehicle. And, and I think that should prove popular because that will, that will take out that one, one person, one car um, principle that we often see on the highways now and which leads to a lot of congestion in our cities. Thank you. That's the second tech show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.